Hey guys, it's Jason with Your Tech Explained, and today I've got the P10, Huawei's latest and greatest. Sadly, I have the Moonlight Silver version here instead of the models featuring the diamond cut pattern on the back. This is the European model as there are no plans to release it here in the US as of now. Let's take a closer look and see what we'll be missing out on over here. The 5.1 screen features a 1080p resolution. While I'm a big fan of Quad HD screens, I don't mind 1080p on smaller displays, as long as they're high quality like the P10. I found the colors were vibrant and the blacks were very good for an LCD screen. If you were wondering, yes, it still has a headphone jack, along with the USB-C and the speaker on the bottom. The speaker sounds good and is loud and clear. The SIM slot on the P10 accepts a nano SIM and micro SD card up to 256GB. The dual camera design has returned this year. It has the same Leica branding as the P9 and again, Huawei kept it flush with the body. Something I wish every manufacturer could pull off. The biggest change is the fingerprint scanner, which has made a jump to the front instead of the back. I'm not really a fan of this as I prefer the scanner on the back. I just find it more ergonomic and comfortable to use on the back. The P10 is running EMUI 5.1 on top of Android 7.0 Nougat. EMUI has often been one of the biggest drawbacks to a Huawei phone. However, in EMUI 5, they've made a lot of changes. It now has an improved UI and by default it leaves off all of their task killing. This has gone a long way to improving the user experience. It still has issues, but EMUI is no longer a reason to completely avoid Huawei phones. Even though the scanner has jumped to the front, they still offer gestures to control your phone. This time, you can even use it to navigate your phone, but you're going to have to hide the nav keys in order to do it. It's a neat trick, but I preferred using the nav keys overall. This year, the dual Leica camera system returns with an upgraded 20 megapixel monochrome sensor, while the RGB sensor stays the same at 12 megapixels. It also kept the f2.2 aperture and laser focus, but now it has optical image stabilization. Despite the praise the dual camera has garnered, I was left unimpressed with the photos. Don't get me wrong, they come out sharp and the black and white mode can be fun to play with. Still, I just wasn't wowed by the photos. They often had a yellow tint and in low light there was a lot of noise. I feel like Samsung, LG, and the Pixel phones do a lot better job overall. Battery life, I'd say was average to good. With the 3200 mAh battery in the P10, I was seeing close to 4 and 4.5 and hours screen on time. Generally, I'm used to seeing a little bit better from Huawei phones, but that's definitely acceptable and will get you through the day. The P10 was very snappy and quick, running the Kirin 960, Huawei's latest top-of-the-line in-house CPU, along with 4GB of RAM. This phone shouldn't give you any problems in the performance department. I never really noticed any slowdowns or hiccups in my usage. In the end, I found the P10 to be a good phone overall, but because of the price, it left me unimpressed. It offers good performance, average battery life, and a decent camera. For the asking price of almost $700 though, I'd expect more. Samsung and LG both offer much more with their flagships for similar prices. If the P10 were $100 less, I feel like it'd be much more appealing. Thanks for watching guys and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more.